folks, what's up? Um, hopefully this is working. I'm live streaming tethered to my phone at the Hotel for Framework Summit. Um, and uh, yeah, just like hiding here, um, working on some stuff. So anyway, I thought I'd show you something that I did in, in DOM testing library that I, I thought uh, could be useful for people. So um, I had this thing, um, and uh, actually we could probably, we could probably show you. Um, if you go to paypal.me slash um, some user slide, which by the way, you could send me money if you want to. <laughs> but I'll, I'll view source here, and here we've got um, all of our content is rendered by the server, um, and then we load that into the app. Um, and we not only the content, but also um, some client data. Um, hopefully I'm not showing you anything. Well, I guess <laughs> this is all public anyway, so hopefully we don't put anything in there that's kind of important. But um, yeah, so the problem was that we're running Cypress, and we're using Cypress testing library, and um, we say, hey, Cypress, go get me the text that says, like, that we're testing the uh, user creation uh, flow. And so we say, hey, Cypress, go get me the text that says, you know, create your link or something. I can't remember what exactly the test was, but we were finding um, that text inside of this client data, I think, either that or um, it was in, inside of the content. But in, in any case, we were, um, like, when we load the app, um, in the client side code, we go grab that script, we load up a JavaScript module with some data, and then we delete the script from the page. But before that has a chance to run, Cypress is like, oh, hey, cool, I found a node that has that text. Uh, so here it is, it's this script tag, and um, not the button that we actually wanted. Um, and so what we were thinking is, okay, we'll have to wait until the script tag is removed, or maybe try to remove it before Cypress gets a chance, I don't know. Um, and I, as I was thinking about it, I was like, no, that doesn't seem like the right, um, right solution. The real solu or, or the real problem is that we're getting a script tag when we're looking for text. And script tag, um, like an inline script tag like this, yes, it has text inside of it, but the user doesn't see that text. So we should never be, like there's not really a good use case in testing for finding text that's inside of a node that you can't actually um, uh, interact with and so I thought well why don't we just make it so they get by text query never returns a script tag um, so that was the idea um, but what I ended up doing as I was designing this API is I was like well I mean I could just uh, here I'll show you right here um, this is where the query by, uh, query all by text um, is uh, located um, and I was thinking okay so we'll just add a like a filter here to filter out all script tags um, before we check to see if the the node has text that is correct um, and um, that just didn't feel right for me I was like well what if somebody wanted the script tag well then I'll have a like a like disable default boolean or something um, and then I thought well what if they want to ignore something else or some ignore more stuff um, and so I thought, okay, I wonder if we could provide a query here and we do like an inverse uh, query. So if it matches this query, then don't um, include it. And so that was when I went to MDN and I was like, I wonder if there's some way to check whether an element matches a query. And yes, there is um, element that matches. So here they say, get me all the LIs and we'll iterate through those and see if one of those matches uh, this query of endangered. And it works. So. And that's what I ended up doing. I said, okay, we'll add a new option called ignore and we'll just default it to script. And then we'll add this filter here uh, to say if, if uh, not ignore, so don't, so you'll, um, you'll filter things out unless um, there, uh, ignore is falsy. So you set it to an empty string or set it to false um, or that node does not match the ignore uh, query. So if there isn't an, an ignore specified, then we'll just not ignore anything. If there is an ignore specified, then we'll ignore it if it matches the ignore query. And so doing this means that people can, um, here we've got our, our test for this. Um, we get the, the default expected behavior where we have a script and we have a div, and that script um, should be ignored by default. So here we get the div only. Um, so we query or get all by text. We expect that to have a length of one and it should be the div. Um, but then if you really, for some reason, you want to get that, that script, then you can set ignore to false, or we could do an empty string. Um, false makes more sense to me. Um, and then we, we should have a length of two. So um, yeah, here's the pull request for that. 
Um, so I added the ignore. Um, I added that to the docs to explain what's going on, why we're doing that. Um, added the test. And this is mostly reformatting. I've just added ignore script and then added another filter here. That's all I did. Um, I hope that's interesting and useful for you all. I'm going to peace out. Um, it was fun, and I'll see you all later.